Hi everyone, welcome to the first chapter of this video series about how to use the Cortex API in C++. During this series, chapters will be divided into two parts. In the first part, I will go over part of the Canova example project from our GitHub and then go through every line of code to make sure we understand it. And then with our new knowledge, we will, as a second part, go and build our own visual servoing application bit by bit. In today's episode, we will learn how to connect to a robot, we will learn how to do error management, and we will learn how to subscribe and unsubscribe from robot notifications. So now let's get started. For today's video, I've built a new file inside the examples project from our GitHub named Getting Started. But don't worry if you don't have access to this file, it's only a copy-paste mashup of what's already available in API creation error management and notifications. Let's go through this file line by line to make sure we understand everything. First, we define the IP address as 192.168.110. This is the default IP address of your ARM if you're connected through the Ethernet port. If you're connected to your Wi-Fi, you will have to change this value. Then we define the port as 10,000 because this is the port we're going to use for our TCP client. If you were to use a low-level API, then you would need to use 10001. Now, before we can connect to the robot, we need to create all the API structures that are necessary to actually get the connection. First, we will make an error callback as a Lambda function. Note that this callback can contain whatever you want, but for the purpose of this example today, we will only print that there was an error. This callback will be called whenever there's an error in an asynchronous function. Then we build a transport client TCP to be able to send high level commands and a router client. You can visualize the transport client as the structure responsible for assembling the messages of the API and the router client as the structure responsible for sending those messages to the robot. Then we do the transport to send a connect message to the proper IP address and the proper port. Then we will need to log in as a user on the robot. To do this, we're going to create a session info and log in using the default username and password admin and admin. We can set the session and activity and connection and activity timeout to whatever values we want. I will use uh, 60 seconds and 2 seconds. Then, to be able to send this information to the robot, what we need to do is uh, create a session manager and use the session manager to create a session using the info we did. Now, in theory, we're ready, we're connected to the robot, but if we want to do anything, we will need to have access to the base and to different devices. So for this purpose, we will create a device config client as well as a base client. These two clients contain the main functions from the API that will be useful to us later on. Now let's see an example of error management. This line here is trying to create a user profile with an empty user profile. This will cause an error. Because we're inside a try catch, this error will be caught and we will catch it and send it to this display error detail function. So as you can see the display error detail function, it receives a detailed exception. You can print all the information from your detailed exception by using exception.what, but if you want to have access to only parts of that information, you can get access to the error code, subcode, and substring individually instead of all in a single package using error code, error subcode, and error substring. The issue if you're using this is that you will only have access to the enum values inside the error and not their string equivalent, meaning it will be hard to interpret what the error actually is. If you want to have access to the string equivalent, you can have you can use error codes names and sub-error codes name and print 
what you want. So now, whenever we throw an error and go through this display error detail, we will be able to print all the information about this error, which will allow us, hopefully, to fix it. So now, let's focus on notifications. For our notifications, what we want is to create a, another callback that is not the same as the error that will be called uh, whenever we receive a notification we are subscribed to. So to create this callback, first we create a Lambda function that will call this notification callback function that I've already created. This notification callback in contains configuration change notifications. This is because we're going to subscribe to configuration change notifications only. So as you can see here, this data contains some information that we can do whatever we want with it. For example, here we're simply changing it to a JSON string and then printing it. So now that we can do whatever we want with the notification, how do we subscribe? So we've created the callback. Now, all we have to do is go to the service that uh, handles the notification we're interested in. In this case, it's the base that is responsible and call on notification, whatever the topic we want and topic then send the callback we created over here. And finally, a template for what will be returned, in which case here is a notification options. This will return a handle that is useful to save because it will allow us to unsubscribe later. Now let's see if this works. To see if this works, because we're uh, subscribed to the configuration change topic, uh, one thing we can do to create a notification is actually create a user profile. So now we can use create a user profile on the base of the robot, wait for a while to make sure that the signal is sent to the robot, and we will, re we will receive the notification information. Then uh, once we're not interested in those messages anymore, we can unsubscribe. Uh, since this is only an example and we do not want to actually have a permanent new user profile on our robot, we can delete the user profile here using the function delete user profile. Delete user profile calls base delete user profile here. Once we launch the example, you will notice that since we are unsubscribed from the topic, we will not receive the notification about the deletion of this profile. Now that we're done using the API, we can close it properly and delete everything. So first, all the operations you have to do are the same as when you created the API, except in the opposite order. So first, we close the session manager session then we deactivate the router and disconnect the transport. Finally, we can delete all the new pointers. Now let's see what's the output of this program. So we can see that we've created a session for communication we created our detailed exception. We, you can see that it's a device error with a subtype username empty. And then all the prints that we made for all the separate uh, information from the error are also there. So the description is empty username. The error code is three, subcode is 105. But as you can tell, only three and 105 don't tell us much. Uh, even the empty string, empty username, might not be descriptive enough uh, in case of other type of errors. So
So if we want to have the string equivalent, then we get error devices and username empty, which are the enum for uh, the respective values 3 and 105. Then we can see that we're trying to subscribe to the configuration change notification. We create the user profile and our callback arrives. So this callback gives us all the information that's inside the data structure that we received with the notification. Finally, we unsubscribe from the notification, delete our user profile, and notice that we did not get a callback because we are unsubscribed. And finally, we deleted everything and exited without an error. That's it for today's video. Stay tuned for part two of this chapter where we will start building our own visual servoing application.